Okay, we have Ms. Professor Krzysztof Koszynski here with us this morning from the Polish Academy of Sciences, Warsaw, Poland, and he's going to be talking about the national movement in occupied Poland, negative stereotypes. Mr. Koszynski. Good morning. Good morning. You've got 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first a few words of introduction. Uh, the map presents the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth before 1772. At that time, the country had an area of 308,000 square miles. It was located on the Baltic Black Sea Bridge, which had and is still of strategic importance of European geopolitics. In the 18th century, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth fell victim to the aggression of three neighbors, Russia, Prussia, and Austria. In 1795, it disappeared from the map of Europe. It was a geopolitical and economic catastrophe. The result was geopolitical imbalance. Moreover, the Polish, Polish lands became a zone of poverty. The, the, the next map presents Europe without Poland in 1914, on the eve of the outbreak of World War I. Between 1795 and 1914, subsequent generation of Poles faced the question of how to regain an independent state and how to unite a society torn apart by the three partitions. In the last quarter of the 19th century, new pol political uh, trends emerged in Poland. Socialism, the peasant movement, and the most original and most important, national democracy, also commonly known as, as the national movement. Roman Dmowski was its principal leader and ideologist. By education, he was a biologist, a doctor of natural sciences. For those times, uh, he was acquainted with the world quite well. He spoke Russian, French, English, German, Italian, Portuguese. He traveled to Russia, England, France, Switzerland, Italy, Brazil, USA, Japan. Uh, probably he felt best in London. He dressed according to the English fashion until the end of his life. However, he was skeptical of British imperialism. He critically assessed British policy towards Poland, uh, towards Central and Eastern Europe uh, after 1918. Dmowski was looking for his own ideological path. He became one of the most important political writers in Polish history. His most important works include Thoughts of a Modern Pole, Germany, Russia, and the Polish cause, Polish politics and the rebuilding of the state, the church, nation, and state. Because of Dmowski, national democracy was not only a political movement, but also a school of political thinking. It taught patriotism as well as geopolitics. Modern politics in place of romantic but suicidal uprisings. The activity brought measurable results. June 28th, 1919, Roman Dmowski and Ignacy Jan Paderewski signed the Treaty of Versailles on behalf of an independent Poland once again. National democracy has made a decisive contribution to Poland's independence. However, as a result of the coup d'etat in 1926, it lost its influence over the authorities and state system. The importance of national democracy increased in 1939 after the outbreak of World War II. National democ democracy was uh, national democracy had actually been anti-German since its uh, inception. Uh, it became the leader of of significant significant number of Poles, especially young people. It co-founded the Polish un underground state. It created the National Military Organization, which numbered 87,000 members. 
1942, the National Military Organization became part of the Home Army, the Polish Underground Army. In addition, the National Armed Forces were created, which had tens of thousands of members. National democracy was against the Warsaw Uprising in 1944. However, over 1,000 soldiers of the National Military Organization fought steadfastly from the first to the last day of the uprising. National democracy has suffered huge losses due to the German occupational terror. Thousands of members, activists of national democracy were murdered in public executions, prisons, concentration camps. Representative, re representatives of the national intelligence, we call it intelligentsia, uh, especially in Western Poland, were murdered using the guillotine. It was supposed to be the symbolic decapitation of Poland. The final destruction of national democracy took place in 1946-47 as a result of communist regime terror. All leaders and the more important activists, if they had survived the war, were arrested, executed, or were given long-term prison sentences. To this day, the graves of many of them have not been found. Polish scouting created during the occupation by national democracy was also broken up. During the 45 years of communism, the negative image of national democracy was widespread and chronicled. As a result, the tradition of national democracy has been largely ousted from the historical memory of, Polish, of the Polish nation. Its negative, often caricatured image is also present in the contemporary historiography. I would like to point out at least six negative stereotypes concerning national democracy and probably the most widespread. First, first, uh, pro-Russianess. What, what does this come from? Before 1914, the Moscow came to a decision that Poles could unite and regain their independence if they were associated with the Triple Entente. The key to success, the Moscow thought, was to defeat Imperial Germany. Given the situation of Poland, however, this involved the necessity of an agreement with Russia. But many Poles who suffered enormously at the hands of Russia did not accept this. Dmowski had no illusions about Russia. He believed, however, that there was no choice at the time. The road to Paris or London led through Petersburg. Ultimately, Dmowski was successful in his argument, but was not understood by everyone. Secondly, national democracy is a variant of fascism. Hardly anyone remembers that this is the result of Soviet propaganda. In 1926, the leadership of Soviet Communist Party began to call its opponents fascists. This was carried on during World War II. Usually, Soviet propaganda did not distinguish between Italian fascism and German Nazism. It should be stipulated that Italian fascism exerted some influence on national democracy as well as on, as on other political currents, especially during the Great Depression. However, in 1931, Dmowski had already distanced himself from fascism and the Mussolini regime. Over time, the critics of Italian fascism among the supporters of, the, of national democracy increased. Italian fascism was strongly condemned during the war. It is worth noting that national democracy considered German national socialism, Nazism or Hitlerism as a separate phenomenon and which was described as neo-pagan tribal xenophobia. Fairly. Nationalism. Many misunderstandings arose around this concept. 
For Poles, the word nationalism was understood differently than for the inhabitants of other countries. It meant survival without, without an independent state, consolidation of a society broken up between three partitions, the national awareness of millions of peasants, and later surviving the German and Soviet occupation during World War II. So for many, nationalism was a neutral term meaning the, the national liberation of the Polish people. It must be added that Dmowski was aware that nationalism could not only mean national egoism. Uh, this, this could result in narrow-minded chauvinism. That is why he used the word nationalism reluctantly. He wrote in his famous book, Thoughts of a Modern Pole, everything that is Polish is mine. I cannot give up anything. I'm allowed to be a proud of what is great in Poland, but I must accept also the humiliations that the sense of the nation for the negative elements in it. From 1930s, ideologists of national democracy closely associated nationalism with the Latin civilization, uh, not to be confused with Latin America, of course. Latin civilization is a Roman Catholic religion, Roman law, Greek philosophy, hence the sense of cultural kinship with France, Spain, Portugal, the Czech Republic, Hungary, and up to a point also with Italy. During World War II, it was intended and planned that Civitas Christiana would be the foundation of the new Europe. Fourth, anti-Semitism. This is probably the most complicated problem in Polish history, hard to understand for Westerners. In the 19th century, Polish-Jewish antagonism intensified. It had many reasons. The impoverishment and the classification of Poles as a result of partitions of Poland. The mass migration of Jews from Russia to Polish lands in the second half of the 19th century. The advantage in small and large cities. For example, in Warsaw, the number of Jews increased from 41,000 in 1850 to 337,000 in 1914 to become 40% of Warsaw residents. Next, the support of the Jewish elite for the German concept of so-called Middle Europa during the First World War, the aspiration of Jews for national autonomy. Before World War II, the vast majority of Jews in Poland, about probably about 80%, were Hasidim. Most did not know Polish. They did not identify with the new Polish state. National democracy believed that, as a result of the partitions, Poland was socially backward. It wanted to create a Polish middle class. This was accompanied by propaganda aimed at Jewish trade and brokering. Jews considered it anti-Semitism. It should be taken into account that after the outbreak of World War II, German and Soviet terror was aimed initially at Poles chiefly. Originally, the Germans created a concentration camp in Auschwitz for Poles. The Holocaust began in 1941-42. Some historians accuse national democracy of not showing sufficient solidarity with the Jewish people at that time. However, one should remember the dramatic situation of most Poles under the threat of death and their improvised existence. Nevertheless, there are many examples of Jews receiving help from Polish people during World War II. For example, Jan Dobraczyński, a, a member of the National Democracy Authorities, helped save several hundred Jewish children secluded in Catholic monasteries. What is more, in my research, I found that a dozen or so Jews fought in the ranks of the National Military Organization during the Warsaw Uprising in 1944. There were no signs of racism. It should also be added that the perception of Jews was influenced by the fact 
that after the war, the communist regimes in Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, or Romania were co-founded by communists of Jewish origin. Fifth, reactionary. It is true that national democracy was against a revolution. Nevertheless, during World War II, an economic plan for the future was developed by the underground movement. It was a combination of laissez-faire economics and Catholic social teaching. An example, village reform. One of the biggest social problems in Poland before the war was the overpopulation of the rural areas. National democracy had a fairly precise plan for every peasant family to own a 10 to 20 hectare private, private farm before the war, small, inefficient farms prevailed. Theoretically, it was possible f thanks to the shift of the western border of Poland westward. It was also expected that a significant proportion of rural youth would find employment in the crafts and industry. At the same time, national democracy rejected statism, government control of the economy. It was believed that statism was one of the causes of Poland's defeat in 1939. The car industry was cited as an example. In this respect, Poland was one of the most backward countries in Europe before the war. National democracy wanted to follow the American model. However, this provided impossible after the war. Sixth, authoritarianism. This is another simplification. Initially, national democracy was inspired by the systems inherent in France and Great Britain. As a result of, of the crisis in democracy and the Great Depression, new solutions were sought. Projects of the state system was developed by national democracy during World War II. The following principles were mentioned. The state system cannot be the dictatorship of an individual. Self-government is important for everyday life. The guarantee of state stability is the middle class, entrepreneurship, craft, industry. The family is the foundation of society, and parental responsibility should be respected. The economy must be based on property rights. It should be emphasized that at the end of World War II, national democracy was the only political formation in Poland that defended the inviolability of property rights. National democracy was the main opponent of socialism and communism. And it was national democracy that was targeted uh, by the communist terror after the war. At the same time, the communist propaganda called national democracy fascist, reactionist, capitalist, or bourgeois. Finally, the last point, geopolitics. During World War II, national democracy supported the concept of a bloc of nation states from the Baltic Sea to the Black and Adriatic Sea. It was also called intermarium. The keystone component of Intermarium was to be the Polish-Czech Confederation, also the alliance with Romania and as far as possible with Hungary and Yugoslavia. To some extent, it was a return to the heritage of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Intermarium was to be a counterweight to Russia and Germany, a guarantee of peace and stability in Europe. However, the project could not be implemented at, the, at that time. We are returning to it today, as you can see on the last map. For example, the Free Seas Initiative supported by the USA. On July 6, 2017, President Donald Trump said in Warsaw, Poland is the geographic heart of Europe. And further, to the citizens of this great region, America is eager to expand our partnership with you. We welcome stronger ties of trade and commerce as you grow your economies. President Trump referred here, among others, to the concept of national democracy. However, hardly anyone 
understood this because this heritage was destroyed, forgotten, and contaminated by the hypocrisy of 45 years of communism. It is time to remember this heritage, to recall the facts and reject the false stereotypes. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Koshinsky.